Hi, this is Mark from HonestVideoGameReviews.com and today I'd like to talk about CPU and GPU temperatures. I build gaming computers as a hobby, but I've been doing it for a long time and I do enjoy video gaming a lot. And I also have been playing around with, with my website, which is, which is very amateur, but I'm just doing it for fun. But I'd like to answer a few questions today about gaming and different temperatures and how hot everything should get without actually melting everything down. So first I'm going to talk about processors. We're going to go into the Intel line first. And Intel has, their modern processors have different technologies like your Sandy Bridge, your Ivy Bridge, your Haswells. And as you can see on the screen here, the max temp of the i3-2100 Sandy Bridge is 69 degrees Celsius. And as you move down through the different lines, you can see the max temps change but nothing lower than 65 degrees Celsius as the max temp. So Intel has a pretty good handle on temperatures and what they can withstand. Intel during heavy gaming is very, very happy around the 55 degrees Celsius range. So if you're under a heavy load doing some heavy gaming or you're processing a video, you really don't want to get over that 55 degree mark. You can, but that's more or less your your happy place for the CPUs. Now, as we go down into AMD, you're going to notice that they have the different technologies too, like your pile driver, your bulldozer, your Trinity line. The pile driver series max temperature is at 61 degrees Celsius, and as you go through the different lines here, you're going to see that they do change. Um, the Trinity line has a 74 degrees Celsius as the max temp for the A10 5800K. That processor is basically going to withstand the highest amount of, of temperature, but most of them, their max temps around 61 degrees Celsius. And again, they're very happy around the 50 to 55 degrees Celsius range during heavy gaming, so you really want to stay... I'm going to say around 55 degrees to have your computer last quite a few years. What can you do if your computer is overheating or your processor is overheating? Well, as you see in the top left corner here, you have, you have your standard heat sink. And what that does is it cools your processor down. Your standard heat sink isn't really made for overclocking. And if you have a cramped case, you really don't want to go with your standard heat sink. Most of them, most standard heat sinks generally do come with your processor. But if you have a cramped case or you want to do some overclocking or you're coming with some overheating issues, you can go with the Cooler Master, as you see in the top right hand corner here. It has different heat pipes and the radiators on the side. Very, very good at getting rid of the heat. So you can upgrade to that, and if you really want to get extreme, you can go into the liquid cooling in the bottom left corner here. That's great for people who want to overclock and just in general do some heavy gaming. So a lot of people's cases overheat too because of fan issues. Processors rely on a good room temperature and being dust free. So Anytime you see dust in your case, feel free to use a dust off or some kind of air duster. They're not going to harm your computer, and I recommend probably dusting your computer about once a month. Now, let's get into GPUs, or better yet, as they're called, graphics cards. I'm going to go to... Let me just get into the different websites here that I've been looking at information. This is from the NVIDIA line, and you're going to see the GTX 760 can withstand a maximum temperature of 97 degrees Celsius. Very, very hot. Maybe cook some bacon on that thing. And I'm just browsing around, just looking at different max temperature ranges, and I went through a lot of graphics cards, and especially from the NVIDIA line here. You're looking at the GTX 970 on the screen, can withstand a temperature max temp of 98 degrees Celsius. You really don't want to get that hot. So you're going to ask, next question, 
how hot should I be running? Well, during I was looking at the different gaming softwares and I was looking at different temperatures during heavy gaming that I've been getting. Your NVIDIA software generally is very, very comfortable around 80 degrees Celsius and as high as 85 degrees Celsius. I generally run between 81 and 82 degrees Celsius, and that's during heavy gaming, your Crisis 3, your very, very graphics intense games. They're going to run 80 to 82. Now, you get into stuff lower like World of Warcraft or something that's not going to stress your GPU very heavily you're probably going to run around 60 degrees Celsius, which which is normal. So the more you stress the, the graphics card, the higher temperatures you're going to get. I was having a very, very hard time finding the Radeon graphics card line GPU max temperatures, but I did call customer service and I talked about quite a few of their cards. And generally they're GPU max temperatures are between 95 and 100 degrees Celsius. So same thing with their line, 80 to 85 degrees, very, very healthy during graphics intense games. Nothing to be concerned about. What can you do if you're really heating up your graphics card and you don't want to overheat anything or damage anything? Turn down your graphics settings. That's, that's one of the things you can actually do Make sure your case is ventilated enough. Throw a fan in there on the graphics card. Add more fans to your case. But some of the little things that you can do to help you out a little bit. And air dust is your friend. So I, I really hope I, I helped you out here. I went through everything and answered some questions about CPU and GPU max temperatures and kind of ease your mind a little bit. But I want to keep this short and sweet, so please guys visit my website, honestvideogamereviews.com, and hopefully I was able to help you out today.